The House will come to order. All members take their seats. The clerk will please unlock the machine and take the roll. Members will record their presence by pressing the green button. Is there any member present not yet recorded? Please hit the green button on your iPad. Thank you. The clerk will lock the machine and take the count. We have 57 members present. There is a quorum. All rise for the invocation to be delivered by Representative Fenton Fung, who will also lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Tomorrow ushers in the sacred Chinese New Year, also known as the Spring Festival. It is a time of great rebirth, renewal, and a focus on the family. This year, we usher in the Year of the Ox, characterized by honesty and hard work. With the challenges in front of us, there has never been a better time to embrace these qualities in all of our work the legislature undertakes. Traditionally, families greet each other on this sacred holiday by saying kunke fa choi, which quite literally translates to greetings, become rich. While we all certainly want to embrace those good wishes as we stare down a $500 million budget deficit, we also want to embrace the larger meaning of being rich in health, rich with friendship, and rich with good wisdom to bring the state of Rhode Island to a better place. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Representative. Next order of business is the approval of the House Journal. Is there any objection to the approval of the journal of, of the previous day? Hearing none, so ordered. Communications. The next order of business is communications. Clerk, do we have any communications? Communications, if so, please read. Representative Deborah Falella is unable to attend session today, Thursday, February 11th, 2021. Representative Leonella Felix is unable to attend session today. Representative Masha Wranglin Vassell is unable to attend session today. And Representative Robert Phillips is unable to attend session today, Thursday, February 11th, 2021. Thank you. Received and placed on file. Thank you, clerk. Next order of business is new business. Is there any new business? Representative Casimira with new business. Representative Fenton Fung with new business. Chairwoman Fogarty with new business. Representative Agello with new business. Representative Amore with new business. Chairman Craven with new business. Representative Caldwell with new business. Representative Noray with new business. Chairman Azanara with new business. Representative Perez with new business. Chairwoman Camille Vela Wilkinson with new business. Representative Carson with new business. And repre Representative, I was going to say, excuse me, Representative rep <laughs> Iacoy, because I looked at you and I saw Lauren, so I apologize. Representative Speakman with new business. Representative Nardone with new business. Whip Kazarian with new business. Chair, Deputy Chair, Deputy Speaker Lima with new business. Any other new business? We can come back to new business if, there is, if I'm missing anybody. Please stand. I do not see anybody. For those pres representatives present, there's also a box here in the front for new business as well. And as always, you can bring them to the speaker's office. There's a box outside as well. Thank you. We're going to come back to new business if we need to. We do not have a calendar, but I believe, Chairman Hull, uh, we have a resolution for a, a bill for immediate consideration. Mr. Speaker, 
I have an IC with the approval of minority and majority leader. Uh, we have the exact bill that we passed on Tuesday, uh, brought to us by Representative Caldwell, that authorizes the Exeter West Greenwich Regional School District to issue not to exceed seventeen million eight forty general obligation bonds, and I move passage. Re Representative Chairman Hull moves passage, seconded by Leader Blazajewski. Representative Caldwell, Chairman McNamara, Representative Bia. Ch Chairman Abney, Representative Casimiro. Anyone else second? I'm going to ask you to press the second button because this is a machine vote. So if you want to second this, I will read your seconds. You will hit the purple button on your screen. Yep. Representative Speakman. Representative Amore. Chairwoman Vella Wilkinson, Representative Morales, Representative Bia, Representative Mazakowski, Chairwoman McEntee, Chairwoman Williams, Chairman Azanaro, Representative Ka Constantino, Re Representative Corkman, Representative Shawcross Smith, Rep Chairman Bennett, <laughs> Deputy Whip Ackerman, Representative Place. Whip Kazarian. I said that already. Representative Cardillo. Thank you. Representative Hull, could you send that up? This is a blind spot, Brian. You gotta jump up and down. Representative Kennedy also is a second. And can you record us as being present? Yes. Representative Kennedy and Representative Edwards. Thank you. Representative Beer as well. Pursuant to our rules, because I know we have freshmen and I'm, I'm a freshman in many ways, uh, we're taking this up right to the calendar because under our rules this is a duplicate of a, of a House bill that we already had hearings on and already has gone through the process and been posted. Pursuant to our rules we can take it up under immediate consideration. Chairman Hull moves LC00965. Senate version 0113 of the House bill we passed on Tuesday, seconded by Lita Blasiszewski and many others, as I said earlier. Clerk, please unlock the machine. All those in the affirmative, please vote green. All those in the negative, vote red. Clerk, please lock the machine. We have 61 in the affirmative, zero in the negative. The act prevails. Thank you. Next order of business is announcements and introductions. Are there any announcements or introductions, please? Representative uh, Chairwoman Diaz, please. Chairwoman, Chairwoman Williams, after Representative Diaz, please. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I don't need anything else. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Chairwoman Williams, and then Chairman Solomon. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have a special request with regards to Black History Month. Proceed. Thank you. As you know, unforeseen circumstances come and go. However, we are still dealing with the pandemic, and we're dealing with the shortest month of the year, and we'll have a week off for recess, so that shortens it legislatively, it shortens the celebration as a body 
in the chamber, a new temporary chamber. I am requesting that Black History Month or American history be extended to the following month, second week or the third week in March. March 15th, so, so ordered. Thank you. Thank you, a, a worthy request, proud to grant it. Chairman Solomon. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. With the permission of the Majority Leader and Minority Whip, I have a bill introduced on your behalf and in the Warwick Delegation for immediate consideration, extending condolences on the passing of our friend Joseph Colucci. If I may say a few words. Just a minute, please. Please continue, Chairman. I knew Joe Gallucci my entire life. He and my grandfather, Walter Santos, were best friends, and I can't remember a time when Joe wasn't around. I still remember the days when he, Joe Walsh, and my grandfather sat together laughing over politics. Politically, he was a mentor, guiding me through my first campaign and always offering advice. He was a great politician, but an even better friend. I will miss meeting him for coffee at Honeydew and Warwick the many times that we did. Uh, he was a unique individual, great person, great friend of all of us. Uh, everyone has a good, great Joe Gallucci story. And he's survived by his beloved children, Frank Gallucci and his wife Ruth, Joseph Gallucci and his wife Rosa Maria, Michael Ferruccio and his wife Jennifer, his brother Raymond Gallucci and his wife Carol, and four grand grandchildren, Francesco Gallucci Jenkins, Maria Gallucci, Joanna Gallucci, and Joseph Gallucci. The world is a sadder place without Joe. He will be missed. Thank you, Chairman. He was a uh, wonderful person, a dear friend. I echo your words. <clears throat> uh, Joe was a, <clears throat> excuse me, a, a personal mentor of mine as well. He was, uh, in many ways, Mr. Warwick, and I think that was a title he would have enjoyed. Uh, Chairman McNamara, hey, would you please send that up, Chairman Solomon? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I join with my colleague, Chairman Solomon, and the rest of the delegation, uh, mourning the loss of the Honorable Joseph E. Gallucci, Mr. Speaker, he had 16 years of dedicated service, both on the City Council and as Director of Elections for the City of Warwick. He was a good friend. He had class and dignity that he brought to every level of public service, and he was always humble and respective, constantly committed to others, and especially the citizens of Warwick. And I respectfully ask that we adjourn in his memory. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Chairman. Very nicely said. Thank you. Representative Noray, and then Representative Agello. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. With the permission of both leaders, I have a House resolution that I'd like to have read, if I could just provide a little bit of information. Expressing sincere condolences for the passing of Soledad Blanco. Uh, Soledad was not only my constituent, she is the mother-in-law of our House uh, Constituent Services Director, Louis Colon. Uh, she passed away last week on the 28th of January and I'd like to adjourn in her memory. Secondly, I'd like to wish my daughter, Robbie Norray, uh, a happy 11th birthday. She'll uh, be 11 next Wednesday on the 17th. Happy birthday, Robbie. While we're uh, on session, so I wanted to take care of it now. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, and I hope you take it someplace nice for her birthday. I certainly will. Chairwoman Ruggiero. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have a House resolution with the approval of both leaders, if I may. Proceed. This House resolution is from a constituent of mine in Jamestown 
congratulating someone that we all know, U.S. Senator Jack Reed, on being named chair of the U.S. Senate Armed Services Committee. Jack is probably one of the most respected voices in the U.S. Senate, certainly when it comes to the military and armed services. He is a great benefit to our country, and he makes us all proud here in Rhode Island. I'd like to leave it on the desk so other colleagues could also sign to congratulate Senator Jack Reed. Thank you. A well-deserved honor for a well-deserved man. Please send it up. Representative Agello. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I was away from my desk briefly for the last vote. I'd like my vote to be counted in the affirmative. So ordered. Thank you. Representative Batista, please. And then Lita Filippi after that. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just wanted to ask to uh, be marked present for today and to vote in the affirmative on the matter that was before. So ordered. Representative Geraldo after Lita Filippi. Leader. Thank you, Speaker. Same request, please. So ordered. Representative Geraldo, then Leader Morgan. I mean, then uh, Representative Morgan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, with permission from the Majority Leader and the Minority Whip, I ask to present a resolution. Proceed. I have a resolution expressing condolences uh, on the passing of Abelardo Abe Hernandez. Um, he was a beloved figure within the Olneyville neighborhood of Providence, uh, a native ec of Ecuador who came to the United States in 1993. Uh, he was a sports coordinator for Brown University and ran a summer soccer clinic, but for 20 years he ran the popular Guatemala Soccer League, which provided an escape for many people from places like Central America, South America, and Africa as they navigated through the roadblocks and opportunities of their new home and country. I played in that league for many, many years and got to, knew, uh, get to, got to know Mr. Hernandez on a personal level. He would always greet me with the How Central Falls doing, uh, which always made me feel really, really wonderful. And so I just want to uh, thank you for this opportunity and ask that we adjourn in his memory. Thank you. We will certainly do that. Please send that up. Deputy Speaker Lima. Hello. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, members of the House. I have an adjournment, please. Proceed. I ask that the House adjourn in memory of John Color Francesco, Jr. He passed away Thursday, January 28th. He was the beloved husband of Justina Tina De Fuscio, who he was married to for 64 years. He was a chief accountant for the state of Rhode Island Family Court for many years before retiring and he was an Air Force veteran of the Korean War. He is survived by his two daughters, Barbara Barone, a very close friend of mine, and her husband, Jeffrey Barone, who is a counselor on the Cranston City Council, and Anne Marie Dennett and Eddie Rotella. He leaves two grandchildren and his great-grandson, and he will be daily missed. Thank you. Thank you. Please send it up, and our condolences to the family. Uh, Representative O'Brien, then Representative Fenton Fung, after they take care of that microphone. Representative O'Brien, proceed, please. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. I'd like to be marked present, please, and also uh, in the affirmative on the resolution vote. So ordered. Thank you. Representative Fenton Fung, please. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, with the permission of the majority and minority leaders, I have a resolution for immediate consideration. Proceed. So I'm in the running for the World's Worst Wife Award because the speaker was generous enough to help draft a resolution um, honoring my husband <laughs> about a month ago, and I keep forgetting it at home. So I apologize um, <laughs> to my husband. 
um, uh, honoring him for taking Cranston from a very financially distressed community to now one of the top 50 cities in the entire nation. And not to talk smack against the Warwick delegation, but he did take Cranston up to become the second largest city in the state. Hand over the license plate. <laughs> Representative McNamara, we're good. Uh, <laughs> you can facilitate that, <laughs> the handing over the 20,000. But anyway, uh, congratulations to my husband on a wonderful career as mayor of Cranston, and I'm sure you'll be seeing him again soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other announcements or introductions? We're going to go back to new business. Chairman Ho with new business. Representative Carson with new business. Speaker Pro Tem Kennedy with new business. Deputy Speaker Lima with new business. Chairwoman Diaz with new business. Whip Kazarian with new business. Lita Filippi with new business. Chairwoman Fogarty with new business. Representative uh, Speakman with new business. Chairwoman Bella Wilkinson with new business. Representative Tabone with new business. Last call for new business. You can also, as I said, place it in the box at the in the front here, or you could put it in, at the box in front of the speaker's office. The, the desk will remain open. Let's go to Lita Blazajewski for announcements, please. Just Thank a minute, Lita. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Announcement, please. Please proceed. Please pay attention. These are announcements uh, regarding the next 10 days. Thank you. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you, Mr. Speaker. The House will be on our annual February recess next week. Our next session will be Tuesday, February 23rd, here at Veterans Auditorium, starting at 4 p.m. As we announced the other day, the bill introduction deadline has been extended to Tuesday, February 23rd, the day we return from recess. However, new requests for legislation must get to Legislative Council by next Monday, February 15th, in order for them to have time to get the bills drafted for you. The desk will remain open during the recess, and bills can be dropped in a box in the Speaker's office, as we just mentioned. When introducing your bills, please try using the new DocuSign system. Uh, contact your assistant if you need more details. There are three committee hearings tonight. Members who wish to participate virtually need to inform the committee clerks before the hearings, and the link will be sent to your official state email. Ladies and gentlemen, as to be expected, there were some minor issues with remote hearings this week. We just ask that you uh, please remain patient. We're working to address all these issues in this new way of doing things and uh, as we continue to implement the new systems and protocols. And finally, last but certainly not least, I just want to offer sincere congratulations to our colleague, Representative Greg Amore, who has been chosen as the recipient of the Paul Crowley Award from the Round School Superintendents Association. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, this award will be presented to Representative Amore on March 15th. It's especially meaningful because the late Representative Crowley was also the chairman of the House Finance Committee's Education Subcommittee. And as all of you know who have been working and serving with Representative Amore for some time, when it comes to issues of education, we always go to him for guidance and advice. So Representative Amore, congratulations on a very well-deserved award. Thank you. And finally, we do have a few birthdays next week. Happy birthday to Representative Kassar this Saturday. Happy birthday to Representative Handy on Monday, and happy birthday to Representative Steve Lima on Thursday. Happy birthday to all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Congratulations, Greg. Uh, Well-deserved recognition. Couldn't think of a better person. Thank you for all you do for East Providence and the state. Happy birthday to all of my colleagues next week. Uh, we have some resolutions for immediate consideration. Representative Fung moves a House resolution honoring and thanking Mayor Alan W. Fung and his dedicated service to the people of Cranston, the state of Rhode Island. Seconded by Representative Magnamara Casimiro, Kaz Whip Kazarian, Representative Chippendale, Representative Place, Representative Flippy, and Lita Blazajewski. All those in favor say aye. 
Any opposed? The ayes have it. The resolution shall pass. I have a House resolution expressing condolences in the passing of Abe Hernandez, moved by Representative Geraldo, seconded by Representative Alzate, Morales, Lita Blazajewski, and Whip Chippendale. All those in favor say aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. I have another House resolution congratulating the Honorable Jack Reed on being named Chair of the United States Senate Armed Services Committee. It's moved by Chairwoman Ruggiero, seconded by myself, Lita Blazajewski, Whip Kazarian, and Whip Chippendale. All those in favor, please say aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. I have a House resolution moved by Representative Noray expressing sincere condolences on the passing of Soledad Blanco. Seconded by myself, Lita Blazajewski, Chairman Casey, and Chairman Corvesi. All those in favor, please say aye. Any opposed, the ayes have it. I have a resolution moved by Chairman Solomon expressing deepest condolences on the passing of the Honorable Joseph Gallucci. Seconded by myself, Chairman McNamara, Chairman Shanley, Chairwoman Bella Wilkinson, Chairwoman Serpa, Representative Morgan, and Chairman Bennett. All those in favor, please say aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. The resolution passes. All the resolutions will be read at the rise, and they'll be left on the desk for signatures. Is there any objection to transmitting all matters on the clerk's desk to Her Excellency the Governor and the Honorable Senate or the Secretary of State forthwith? Hearing none, so ordered. Lita Blazajewski moves that the House adjourn in memory of Joseph Gallucci, John Colin Fresco, Soledad Blanco, and Abe Hernandez, seconded by Lita Filippi. Please stand for a moment of silence. The House is adjourned. The desk will remain open. Everybody have a safe vacation week. Thank you. Speaking of quick question. Yes, sir. Just thinking of what's all these cops with one. I mean, you're pretty familiar with this number. Yep. What do you think if I did one car with one, two, three, four, Perfect. five on one side, flip it over to the other side? Yes. Button, so it's just one. And then laminate. He only gave me, he only gave me the original, that's why. There we go. Thank you. Got them all I got them all lined up. Galucci goes for us. House resolution expressing deepest condolences on the passing of the Honorable Joseph Epifanio Gallucci. Whereas it is with sadness that this house has learned of the passing of the Honorable Joseph Epifanio Gallucci, the loving husband of the late Marianne Ferruccio Gallucci and the beloved father of Frank Gallucci and his wife Ruth, Joseph Gallucci and his wife Rosa Maria, and Michael Ferruccio and his wife Jennifer. And whereas, born in the city of Providence, Mr. Gallucci was the son of the late Joseph and Angelina Gallucci and the brother of Raymond Gallucci and his wife Carol. He was a graduate of Lockwood High School, where he served as co-captain of various high school sports teams and continued his education, earning a bachelor's degree from the University of Rhode Island. And whereas, upon receiving his degree, Mr. Gallucci honorably served our country in the United States Army National Guard, completing his service at the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. 
and whereas a hardworking man, Mr. Gallucci was employed as the regional marketing manager for ITT General Controls for 35 years until his retirement. Active in the Democratic Party, he was elected to serve on the Warwick City Council and as Director of Elections in Warwick for 16 years. In addition, he served as the State of Rhode Island Liquor Control Commissioner and the Manager President of the Continental Little League for 15 years. And whereas, in addition to his wife and children, Mr. Gallucci was the very proud grandfather of four grandchildren. Francesca Gallucci Jenkins, Maria Gallucci, Joanna Gallucci, and Joseph A. Gallucci, and the adoring care caregiver of his pets, Mickey, Mickey, and Sammy. And whereas, there is no doubt that Joseph Gallucci, an honest and steadfast gentleman, left Rhode Island a better place because of his life's endeavors. He enriched the lives of all who knew him, and his dedicated public service was an inspiration to us all. Now, therefore, be it resolved that this House of Representatives of the State of Rhode Island hereby extends its deepest condolences on the passing of the Honorable Joseph Epifanio Gallucci, and be it further resolved that the Secretary of State be and hereby is authorized and directed to transmit duly certified copies of this resolution to Frank Gallucci and family, Joseph Gallucci and family, and Michael Ferruccio and family. House resolution expressing sincere condolences on the passing of Soledad J. Blanco. Whereas it is with deep sadness that this house has learned of the passing of Soledad J. Blanco and beloved wife of Jovencio Blanco for 55 years and the devoted mother of Joel Bianco and his wife Ava, Owen Blanco and Amy, Maria Blanco Colon and her husband Luis, Joven Blanco and his wife Susan, and Floran Blanco and his fiancée Kaua. And whereas Mrs. Blanco was born in Pantabagan, Philippines, a daughter of the late Florentino Maria Jardines and the sister of George Jardines, Manuel Jardines, and the late Florentino Jardines Jr., Alice Miller and Edward Jardines. She had been a resident of the town of West Warwick. And whereas, with a warm personality, Mrs. Blanco created and nurtured a marriage that flourished and a home that was warm and welcoming. She doted on her family, particularly her 11 favorite grandchildren, who are the light of her life. And whereas, in addition to making a wonderful home for her family, Mrs. Blanco, and Mrs. Blanco had been employed at Torre Plastics in North Kingstown until her retirement. She had previously been an elementary school teacher in the Philippines. In her spare time, she also enjoyed traveling and trips to the casinos. And whereas, there is no doubt that Soledad Blanco, a loving wife, mother, and grandmother, and friend to many, left an indelible mark on the lives of those she knew and loved, and she will be dearly missed. Now, therefore, be it resolved that this House of Representatives of the State of Rhode Island hereby expresses our deepest sympathies on the passing of Soledad J. Blanco, and be it further resolved that the Secretary of State be, and hereby is authorized and directed to transmit duly certified copies of this resolution to Joel Blanco and family, Owen Blanco and family, Maria Blanco Colon and family, Joven Blanco and family, and Florian Blanco and family. House resolution congratulating the Honorable Jack Reed on being named the chair of the United States Senate Armed Services Committee. Whereas the Honorable Jack Reed was born in Cranston, Rhode Island, the son of Mary Louise and Joseph Reed. He graduated from LaSalle Academy and the United States Military Academy at West Point, receiving a Bachelor of Science degree in 1971. After graduating, while on active duty, he earned the Ranger tab and served as a paratrooper in the 2nd Battalion, 504th Parachute Infantry Regiment and the 82nd Airborne Division, where he was a platoon leader, company commander, and battalion, battalion, battalion staff officer. During his distinguished military career, Senator Reed earned the Army Commendation Medal with the Oak Leaf Cluster, the Senior Parachutist Badge, and the Expert Infantry Badge. And whereas, Senator Reed attended the John F. Kennedy School of Government at Harvard, at Harvard University and received a Master of Public Policy degree. In 1978, he returned to West Point to serve as an Associate Professor in the Department of Social Sciences. He departed from active duty in 1979 after attaining the rank of captain and continued to serve in the United States Army Reserve until 1991, attaining the rank of major. Upon departing from active duty, Senator Reed attended Harvard Law School, graduating in 1982. 
And whereas Senator Reed was elected to the State Senate in 1984, serving for three terms and deeply impressing his colleagues and the public with his vast knowledge of important public policy issues and with his abiding integrity. In 1990, he was elected to the United States House of Representatives, serving three terms and once again impressing his peers with his knowledge on, myriad, on a myriad of issues, especially pertaining to education and health care. And whereas Senator Reed was first elected to the United States Senate in 2002, winning an impressive 63% of the vote. He has since won re-election overwhelmingly. In 2008, with 73% of the vote, in 2014, with 71% of the vote, and in 2020, with 67% of the vote. In his more than 18 years of service in the United States Senate, Senator Reed has been a leader on a wide range of issues, including the economy, election security, veterans, education, civil rights, and health care. And whereas, most notably, Senator Reed had has been one of the most respected voices within the Senate and the United States on issues related to the military and the armed services, an issue of vital interest to Rhode Islanders, considering that many Rhode Island residents who work at Electric Boat and in Quonset Point. Senator Reed has served as the ranking member of the United States Senate Armed Services Committee from January 3rd, 2015 to February 3rd, 2021. And whereas, on February 3rd, 2021, it was announced that Senator Jack Reed would be the new chair of the United States Senate and Armed Services Committee. His wise counsel, steady demeanor, and vast knowledge of military and world affairs will be of great benefit to our nation, allies, and the citizens of Rhode Island. Now, therefore be it resolved that this House of Representatives of the State of Rhode Island hereby congratulates Senator Jack Reed on being named the chair of the United States Senate Armed Services Committee. And be it further resolved that the Secretary of State be in here by his authorized and directed to transmit a duly certified copy of this resolution to the Honorable United States Senator Jack Reed. House resolution honoring and thanking Mayor Alan W. Fung for his dedicated service to the people of Cranston and the state of Rhode Island. Whereas, born in the city of Providence, Alan W. Fung is the eldest child of Huang Wen and Tang Ping, Crown Colony Chinese immigrants from Hong Kong. In 1969, his family moved to Rhode Island and ran a small business on Cranston Street and Gansett Avenue in the city of Cranston. And whereas, Mayor Fung attended classical high school, received his bachelor's degree from Rhode Island College and his Juris Doctor from Suffolk University. He subsequently worked as a prosecutor for the State Attorney General's office and later served as a lobbyist for MetLife. And whereas in 2002, the Honorable Alan Fung began his political career when he was successfully elected to the Cranston City Council where he served for two terms. And whereas on January 5th, 2009, the Honorable Alan Fung was sworn in as mayor of the city of Cranston and was the first Asian American mayor in Rhode Island history. Cranston is the second largest city in Rhode Island and has a population of more than 81,000 residents. He was re-elected four times as mayor. And whereas, under Mayor Fung's leadership, Cranston became one of the top 50 cities to live in in America for three years in a row, and was also named one of the top 100 best cities to raise a child in 2017. In 2004, he was honored as a Rhode Island Bar Foundation Fellow. He was also honored by Providence Business News as the 40 under honoree and received the Classical High School Distinguished Alumni Award in 2009. Whereas, serving the community in a myriad of capacities, Mayor Fung has also been chair of the Rhode Island Governor's Insurance Council from 2005 to 2008 and is a council member of the Republic National Committee's Asian Pacific American Advisory Council. And whereas, at the, 2012, at the 2012 Republican National Convention, Mayor Fung met the love of his life and future bride, Barbara Ann Fenton, a physical therapist. They married in the summer of 2016. And whereas, through Mayor Fung's commitment, sound fiscal investments, and economic development, the city of Cranston is thriving and his accomplishments are worthy of our gratitude and recognition. Now, therefore, be it resolved that this House of Representatives of the State of Rhode Island hereby honors and thanks Mayor Alan Fung for his dedicated service to the people of the City of Cranston and the State of Rhode Island. We moreover wish him good health, happiness, and much success in all his future endeavors. And be it further resolved that the Secretary of State be and hereby is authorized and directed to transmit a duly certified copy of this resolution to the Honorable Alan W. Fung. Is that it? 
Guido? Whatever was on top, is that all on? Great, yeah. Uh -huh. Are you done? How many did you do? I did whatever you had here. Four. There's one more. House resolution expressing condolences on the passing of Abelardo Abe Hernandez. Whereas Abelard, Abelardo Hernandez, a beloved figure within the Oneville section, neighborhood of Providence, has passed away. He was a native of Ecuador who became a United States citizen in 1993. He enriched our state and his local community with his passion for youth sports and community involvement and strived every day of his life to make his community an even better place in which to live, thrive, and attain the American dream. He leaves behind his wife, children, and grandchildren. And whereas Mr. Hernandez was a sport coordinator for Brown University and ran a summer soccer clinic in Providence. For 20 years, he ran the popular Guatemala Soccer League, which provided an escape for many people from places like Central America, South America, and Africa, as they navigated through the roadblocks and opportunities of their new home and country. And whereas on almost every weekend during the summers, under the guidance leadership and direction provided by Mr. Hernandez. Players ranging in age from 20 to 32, representing 30 different nations, would meet up to play competitive games of soccer in front of their families and friends. These events helped to unite people from different cultures and provide a sense of community for them and their families. Now, therefore be it resolved that this House of Representatives of the State of Rhode Island hereby expresses its deepest condolences on the passing of Mr. Abelardo Hernandez and be it further resolved that the Secretary of State be and hereby is authorized and directed to transmit duly certified copies of this resolution to Mary Bell Martinez and the Hernandez family. <laughs>